So welcome everybody. Welcome to a new human experience podcast. So today is the 14th of October 2021. The topic for this evening is body, mind, spirit complex. So what do I mean by that? Um, the, the reason I, I use this, this name in, instead of human, so it is really referring to a human being. However, the way that um, Ra, from the, the Ra material, um, that I kind of come, came across recently is he referred to a human being as a body, mind, spirit complex. And so this is the, the, the reason why I want to talk about that because um, we, according to what his, I would say his um, explanation of what a body is, what the mind does and what the spirit really is, it really makes sense that he refers to a human being as a body, mind, spirit complex. And because we are going through some changes um, currently, so I thought it would be interesting to revisit some definitions, some basic definitions and start to build from there. So what is a body? I remember um, some people refer to our body as being Gaia's baby. And I think Emilia Benz is one of them who, who's, who mentioned that. And there are a few other people who also refer to our body as being um, Gaia's baby. And so I, I, I kind of understand it, but I don't quite understand it. And so when I go back and, and reread some of what the raw material has said, it, it dawned on me, it, it really made sense to me right now, um, the way he explains it. He, what he said is that the body is really the material emanation of our reality. So what is our reality? Our reality is really the space time of our conscious, of where our consciousness is focused in, in this moment. So in other words, this means that our body is made up of the material provided by earth, by mother earth, which allows our consciousness to um, play with inhabit and mold into a, a form in this moment. So that's really what our body is. Our body is really material that is from earth. So it is earth material, earth, part of earth has this, this layer of material in it that is um, chemical base. And when our consciousness is um, comes on earth, it inhabits and start to manifest a body through this co-creation with earth. And that's why um, Emilia mentioned that our body is um, Gaia's baby, because we just by our own consciousness, um, it does not, it cannot really manifest a body. It, we have to, when we come, when we, our consciousness play on earth, come to earth for some interaction. It is really the combination of our consciousness and earth itself that created these bodies that we currently have. So that really is, the body is really consciousness manifested through material provided by earth. 
by the, the, the playground that we are, or reality, or space time and time space that we are in right now. That's what a body is. And so what is a mind? The mind is a structure, a structure that organizes the inputs that um, our body, that comes from our body through our five senses, and also the inputs from our soul via our other senses. So um, beyond the five senses, the five senses really body-based, but we have senses beyond the five um, physical senses. So those are all the, the um, um, like the clairsentience, clairvoyant, clairaudience, all of those. So all the clairs. So those are our other senses and they are input from our soul. And because of the complexity of the mind's function, so there are actually a few layers of our mind. We have our personal mind, which really has all of the material, um, all of the um, memories, the um, input that is from our um, personal experience. And then there's a layer that also includes our ancestral, our lineage. And then there's a layer, which is the collective. Um, and there are a few collectives. So each um, nationality or each race has a collective. And also there are planetary, planetary, um, planetary um, collectives as well. And also from the, cos from the cosmo, so there are also cosmic collectives that all of those information goes, is all organized by our minds. So our mind is really the most um, complex. Well, I'm not sure whether it is the most complex because I don't know as much about the spirit. I'm still learning about the spirit part, but the mind part is quite um, complicated because it is taking in inputs from both the body, the physical side, and also from the spirit side. And there are layers and layers that mix up our mind. And that's why um, our mind is um, so complicated, so complex, and so juicy and interesting to investigate. And so let's let's go through the, the third definition. What is a spirit? So spirit is really the channel through which all of our personal experience, the planetary experience, meaning the, the, the experience of planet as a whole, and also the universe, all those inputs can be funneled back to source, to oneness. And when, it, when all of these inputs go back to oneness, then this going back to the oneness also mean that anyone else that is within that oneness will also be able to get information from there as well. So there is this, this feedback infinity loop that whatever it is that we experience as a, as a spirit goes back to source, to oneness. And then from oneness, we also get access to all of the experiences of all the other souls there as well. So this, this is what spirit means. And <clears throat> the reason why um, Ra calls this um, uh, body, mind, spirit complex is as you have all um, kind of gleaned from the definitions of what the body, mind, and spirit is, is that they are all intertwined. In the human being, all of these are intertwined. So there is really no body without a consciousness. 
and without um, a mind, the consciousness cannot be focused properly and be able to create these experiences with our body as well. So that's why we, each and every one of us, is a combination, is a, com um, a complexity of our body, our mind, and our spirit. And so why is this relevant? Why am I going into all this definition now? Well, it's because right now, um, as before, before I started with this, talking about this, this um, topic, I was actually checking in with people that are on the call who, who noticed that you know, the last couple of days has been really intense energies that's coming through. And our body is having certain reaction to all these high energies that are coming through us. And um, why are all these things coming through us? Because for the longest time, our body has been the focus, the focal point of our experience. So most of how we construct our reality is through the input that is from our body. And, and, and when I say that for the longest time, I meaning, meaning that you know, at least for the last um, few thousand years, our body has been the point, the focal point of how we think of as being a, the human experience is very body centric. And all of the, the how we evaluate our reality, uh, how we interpret whether something is good or bad, is all from the point of view of our physical senses, from our five senses. And, even, and that does not mean that no one has ever had um, other senses. They, people do have six senses. It is just that we are taught, we are trained as a society to ignore those other senses that we have been trained as a society to focus mainly, if not exclusively, on the five senses. That it's, if you can see it, if you can touch it, then it's real. Otherwise, it's not real. It's just imagination is fake. So that was our understanding of reality. And it was appropriate for us to play that body-centric game for the, the last couple of, of um, thousand years. However, we are, we are at a change point where we are being asked collectively to widen our focus, to look at reality, to interpret what is good and bad to expand that focus so that it is not just body centric anymore, that we are trying to understand and um, reevaluate information from a bigger sense of self more than just our body. And this is a big shift. It is a big shift. And um, that's, that's why our body is doing so much, is, is really reacting to all this energy that's coming in. These energies um, have been coming in for a long time. However, we've been shielded from all these energies. But right now we are actually 
our Earth, Earth itself is at a point in the galaxy, in the universe, where it is, um, it is actually near, close to the center of the, the galaxy. Um, right now, in terms of where it is located, I'm not saying that it is, I'm saying that it is actually aligned with the, the center of the, the, um, the universe. It is not at the center, but it is aligned. It is kind of, um, if you look at where the center of the universe is and you pan out, you'll be able to actually um, know that we are kind of in a way, um, in a position that has a strong resonance to the center of that, of all those energy. That's why we are being hit with such intense energies. It's because our body is changing. Our body was, um, because our consciousness have been focused on just being able to pick up from our five senses, mainly. Like every now and then, some of us who has really dedicated um, our intention and consciousness to grow the, 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 the other senses, the six senses, have been able to um, have access to those senses, to, to those extra senses. But the more majority of us don't. We, we've completely sidestepped all of that. However, that's changing now. The energy is so intense that it is actually reactivating not just the people that has um, specifically chosen to work and develop those extra senses, but that this change is actually happening to everyone. It's not just happening to just the people who, who um, take the time to develop them, it's actually changing all of our bodies so that our body is becoming more sensitive to those extra senses. And, and maybe not right now, but in the near future, and I'm quite sure even now, this is the case, is that in order for a person to not have access to those extra senses, a person would actually have to consciously block out and choose to block out those extra senses. That's really um, starting to be the case now, and it will become more and more pronounced as time goes on, because all the energies coming in now is actually activating all of our bodies, each of these, these material on earth. Um, earth itself has already moved into that, that higher state. Earth itself is already that. And so, human beings, we human beings that are, they're playing on, on earth has not quite made that jump yet. We are being facilitated in, in, from all sides to be able to do that. So that's why these, all these energies are hitting us and it is causing our body to, to start to transform. And so these transformation can be felt as sometimes it can be felt as tiredness. It can be felt as um, an emotional roller coaster because when higher energies hit us, um, anything that any emotions that we have not quite fully processed yet, it will 
it will be tend to be pushed up for us to look at and for us to process. So that's what's happening now. So it's, um, it's going to be rather uncomfortable until we actually make that, that shift to process the what's being what's not processed yet. So that's why our bodies have having all of these symptoms. It could be tiredness, it could be illness, it could be um, felt as anxiety, it could be emotions coming up. All of those things are really part of the ascension symptoms. So that really is what's going on. And um, so, it's, so that's, that sucks, right? <laughs> that really sucks that we, something good is going on, but we, we, our body just for the time being is not having an easy time. And um, part of the shift is also to shift our point of view as well, is to shift to no longer look at good or bad from the point of view of how our body feels, how our experience, how we experience something. If we experience, um, if it's a pleasant experience, it's a good thing. And if it's a bad experience, it's a bad thing. That may work in the, the third dimension, but in, these, in the next dimension, though, it does not work that way. Because we have to start to reevaluate good and bad, not from the point of view of the body and how the body feels, but really from a bigger sense is... Does this experience, whether we feel good in our body or not, does this experience move us forward? Does it move our understanding of ourselves? Does it move our understanding of our reality? Does this move our understanding of our soul, our connection with our soul forward? So good is something that we experience that is going to move our understanding forward, whether it is our understanding of our soul, our reality, or ourselves. There, if it moves us forward, if it moves our understanding forward, then it is being looked at as good from this new perspective. Another thing I want to talk about is that um, we have, I mentioned that this is a big shift and a lot of our sense of self, of who we know ourselves as have been wrapped up really in, wrapped up in our identification with the body. So with appearance, with um, how our body feels, or what can be seen. So a lot of that, of our sense of self or our understanding of ourselves has been based on that. But because of the shift, we have to start to reevaluate all of that. Is that our sense of self now, um, it used to be based on the body, but the body is temporary. The body, it's not permanent, no matter how long we can um, live, the body is still temporary compared to eternity. Our body is still just temporary. So this shift is also a shift in understanding to look at the world, not from temporary, but from what is eternal as well, which means that it is shifting away from the body and it is more 
shifting to look at um, our sense of self from our soul's point of view. So instead of thinking of ourselves as being a human being, we having a body is that we have to understand ourselves as being a soul, a spirit that is having a human experience. So that is a complete 360 change of shift of um, paradigm. That's why this, this shift is not easy to go through. A few more things that I would like to bring up as well to start to shift our understanding is that now we're being asked to look beneath or look beyond the body, which means that it is not how things look. It is not what you do. It is not um, how you look. It is not what you have. It's not about that. It's actually about understanding why you do the things you do, why you think you are who you are, and why you um, have the things that you have. So a lot of it is shifting to the reasons, our reasons to be, to shift to that. And it's a good thing. It's because appearances, the body, is something that can, can be it can be faked. Um, our body, we can put on makeup. We can put a wig on. We can have plastic surgery, all of that. But that's in the old, in, the, uh, in 3D, in the third dimension, because it's very body-centric. So, so we are so focused on appearance. But in this new paradigm, though, it's about why we want to look a certain way. Why? Why do I want to look this way? Who am I being when I want to look this way? What identity am I wanting to project, to, to identify with, to be when, um, when I want to look a certain way, when I wear certain colors, when I wear a certain style of clothing. It is about identity, who it's who we think we are. And what is the implication of all of that? So it brings to the, the, the idea of that each identity has a set of supporting behaviors. For example, um, I am a teacher, let's say, if I think of myself as a teacher, then this, this identity of teacher has a certain set of behavior. It means that I have to know things in order to teach. I have to um, have certain kind of expertise in order to teach. So all of those behaviors is really something that is going to support my identity of teacher. And so if I identify very strongly with this, this teacher identity, then I'm going to have to spend a lot of time making sure that I, at the very least, look like I know things, look like I can... Um, speak on certain topic that I have expertise in it and that my opinion is going to be more um, valid than other people. So those are the, the behaviors that kind of go with what my identity is, um, is being centered around. And when we are when we are focused on a certain identity, 
we are actually not being true to ourselves because our true self is beyond any identity. Yes, part of my, my true self may be a teacher, but I'm also an artist. I am also, um, I also love nature. I also, there are so many aspects of my true self. And those, when I focus on just one identity, I lose all the other options of myself, of my true self. So in this dimension, in this higher dimension now that we are transitioning to, we are moving out of identities. We are actually going back to our true self. And that requires a shift from all of that, meaning that we, we have to, to let go of our, our identities as much as possible. I'm not saying that we don't take on any identities at all. That's, that's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying is that is if you're interested to experience through a certain identity, even the identity of being a teacher, then it's fine as long as you know that it is simply a role that you want to try on for a period of time. It is not who you are. You have to understand that. Whereas before, when we are in the, the third dimension, before, our identity is so, it's something that we defend, that we feel that we defend because we, we are not secure because each of these identities, no matter who we identify with or what we identify with, it is, it is a fake identity. But because we didn't know that it was a fake, that it's fake, we, we have all these experiences and we spend so much time in order to become this identity in order to fit into this identity, whether this identity is a teacher or, um, or just being a certain person, let's say this person that I call Winnie. So I'm so um, identified with this person who has the name of Winnie that I lost sight of myself that is beyond this identity of the true self. So when somebody attack this person that I identify with as Winnie, or if somebody showed me that, oh, what I'm teaching is actually wrong, um, there is a better teaching and what I'm teaching is, is actually no longer valid. When somebody say that, when somebody point that out, it could be something that is true, that is sincerely valid, or it could be just somebody wants to heckle me. But, the, but because of this identity of a teacher, if I didn't really have that bigger perspective that, a teacher is simply a role that I take on, but the most important thing is that I am more than this identity. If I don't have that perspective, that balance, that I am more than all of these identities that I subscribe to, that I try to be, then anytime somebody tells me that I'm wrong, 
then I, I felt like my whole being is being attacked. And that's why all of these um, being defensive and being judgmental, all of these things comes up is all because we have an identity and we have to defend it. And that really is a lot of the old um, way of playing when we play in the in the field of be I am this body and I and these are the, the identities that I identify with and I have to defend them. So in the new paradigm, in the new um, next dimension that we are transitioning into, we have a basic understanding that we're not this body, we're not any of the identities that we currently hold as dear, near and dear to us. We have this um, understanding that we are beyond all of that. And the best way to explore who our true self is, is to start to ask questions. When we ask questions, so who are you? Who do you think you are? Who do you identify with? And then ask the deeper questions as well. Why? Why do you identify with that person? What does identifying with that identity gives you? What's the reason behind it? So there could be so many reasons behind it. It's not about who we are and what we do. It's the reason why we do something. It's, the, it's looking beyond what can be seen, what can be touched. It's about the ideas. And to broaden that out and to understand that we are all identities, and we are simply trying on some identities temporarily in order to gain certain understanding. I'm playing this role of teacher right now because I actually want to learn. Because when I teach, I have to actually learn what it is that I'm teaching. So the more I step up to teach, the more I need to learn. And so this is part of the reason, let's say this is part of the reason that I want to teach. <clears throat> Not because I want to um, feel superior, but because I want to learn. So when someone wants to teach, to be a teacher from that point of view is very different from another person who is also a teacher, but they want to teach because they think that they have a certain accomplishment and they want to teach it to someone else because they want to, let's say that person wants to teach because they actually feel like they, um, they have a certain superiority over other people. Let's say that's the that's their reason because they think that oh I'm good at this I have to I am teaching this. So that teacher is very different from somebody who is teaching because they want to learn. So they're so even though both person. Um, took on the identity of teacher, but their reasons for teaching to be it uh, to be that that teacher is very different. And so, when you teach from the the, um, the reason that you want to learn, it's a certain vibration. Whereas when you teach because you're good at something and you want to to let other people, to share with other people, to let other people share in your 
um, expertise, that's a very different vibration. So that's what we are getting at. We are getting at in this new paradigm is the energetics part of it. It's not really about what you do. It's about why you do something because why you do something really um, speaks to your vibration, the frequency that you are moving in, that you are playing with. So it is also about energy as well. It's also about looking beyond the physical to the non-physical is the energy. I want to actually circle back to judgment. So when we judge something, it's usually when we judge, we are, whether, uh, especially judging ourselves, it's not just judging other people, not just judging other things. Um, more so when we are judging ourselves, is that when we judge, it is a disconnection response. When we judge something, we, there is a certain, um, there has to be a certain beliefs, certain identity behind that judgment. So when you're judging yourself, you are disconnecting from yourself because you identify with a certain set of um, beliefs and behavior. And according to that certain set of beliefs and behavior, you judge from that. So that is a disconnection response. So what is the better way? Um, instead of judging ourselves, instead of judging others, instead of judging anything, what is a better way? What is a more high frequency way of engaging with um, opinions or ideas? A more high frequency way of dealing with ideas is that it's really to, let's say, um, if you listen to or you talk to someone else, and they have, they, they put forth some ideas that is very different from yours. So instead of judging, judging, of course, you have your own set of ideas and you believe that you are right and they're wrong. So, so that's the disconnection. And instead of doing that, it's really to accept that this idea or wherever it is that that person or yourself is at in that moment is to accept that, okay, I am here, let's say, and now accept that that person's idea is different. Accept it. Acceptance is the first thing. And then once we have accepted where we are at or a different idea, once we have accepted that and now figure out where can we go from here? Where can we improve on where can we co-create from here what is the next um what is the next idea what is the next synthesized uh, synthesis of ideas that can come about from this very different ideas of that somebody shared with you instead of judging them is accepting it and then see how you can 
reconcile where you are, what you believe with that person's different ideas. And very, it can be very simple as, oh, okay, your ideas is different from us, but that's good. Um, we don't have to be exactly the same in order to hang out. We can actually uh, still hang out, be friends, and be nice to each other, even though we have very different ideas. That can be something that is one way of doing it or it could be oh okay you you have this idea very different from my understanding however um because i now have not just my own understanding i also have someone else understanding that is going to open up my own understanding so that i can start to actually synthesize a third idea which may be better than the first and the second ideas so that can be another outcome from it so that's what all of these things have to happen in order for us to make that jump to from where we are right now to where we'd like to be in and why i'm going through and talking about all of this is because we are actually at that we are getting closer and closer to the point where we are getting done with the old and we are getting ready to actually start to reconstruct or maybe reconstruct is not the right word but to create the new reality we've been bombarded by, by so many energies that is assisting us to shift so we are actually getting closer and closer to the time where we have to really start looking at what's not working in our reality, not just in our society, more importantly, in ourselves, our understanding of ourselves, our understanding of the reality we are in, our understanding of the time space and the space time that we are in right now because we are not here all by ourselves. We are co-creating with everyone else. However, in order to co-create, we have to get some things clear within ourselves. And that is um, who we think we are. We have to start to get that re-evaluation, moving away from being focused on our body being focused on just the inputs that's coming in from our five physical senses that we have to actually start to expand our focus to start to include and consciously go after and seek all of these inputs that is not just from our physical body but also from our soul from our spirit not just from us but from our collective not just from our lineage not just from our race from our um, nationality not just from earth but also from the universe, from the cosmos. And this is what we have to look forward to. And this is why all of these higher energies are hitting us, is to make us make a move, is to shift us 
to prepare our body to be more sensitive to all of these other inputs and also to bring about all the things that is not working within our reality right now. And that's why we are seeing so many um, pain points, I would say. So we are seeing so many things which from a purely physical point of view, we would consider bad, bad things that are happening. However, they are not bad when we evaluate it from the point of view of spirit, because all these things that we consider bad right now that seems to be happening is actually moving us forward, is making us move out of our comfort zone, is making us start to look at the bigger picture to understand ourselves from beyond the physical. And that's all that's happening. And this is what I want to share um, on this topic of body, mind, spirit complex.